God praise this morning. He's worthy. He deserves the praise. Next song blessed me and I hope it blesses you. Because the truth of the matter is we're absolutely nothing without him. Without God, we're absolutely nothing. All that we have, he gave it to us. Whoever we think we are, he made us. So without him, we're absolutely nothing. Amen. All I have is what you gave me. Who I am is what you made me. I'm absolutely nothing without you. Absolutely nothing without you. Oh, absolutely nothing without you. Oh, Lord, absolutely nothing without you. Help me say, all I have, say, all I have is what you gave me. And who I am. Absolutely. absolutely nothing without you. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. Say all I. Absolutely. absolutely nothing without you. You, 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 you. Absolutely nothing without you. Can we all say that? You. All I have said. All I have is what you gave me. And who I am said. Who I am yeah. is what you gave me. I'm absolutely. Absolutely nothing without you. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. One more time. All I have. All I have. Lord. Is what you gave me. And who I am. And who I am. Lord. Is what you gave me. I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. You, 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 you. Absolutely nothing without you. I'm absolutely nothing without you. Absolutely nothing without you. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. Oh, I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. You, 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 you. Absolutely nothing without you. I'm absolutely nothing without you, Lord. Absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing without you. Absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing without you. Absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing without you. Hallelujah. I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. I'm absolutely nothing. I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. Oh Lord, I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely Lord. nothing without you. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing Lord. without you. Oh Lord, I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. Come on, let's give God praise. And we know that we're absolutely nothing without you. We can't breathe without him. We can't move without him. We can't think without him. We can't do nothing without him. Because we're 
Absolutely nothing without you. I'm absolutely nothing without you. Absolutely nothing without you. One more time. All I have and all I have is what you gave me. And who I am. Who I am Lord. is what you made me. I'm absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing without, without you. You, 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 you. Absolutely nothing without you. I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. One more time. I'm absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. You, 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 you. Absolutely nothing without you. Come on, give God praise. Yes. Hallelujah. You deserve it. He deserves our praise. Yes. He deserves the glory. Yes. He deserves the honor. Yes. Hallelujah. He's been better than good to us. He's been better than good to us. And it's hard for some people to say I'm nothing without you. Because we think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think of ourselves. But my to say I'm insufficient of myself to think anything of myself. But my sufficiency, Lord, it comes from you. It comes from you. Come from you. I know this. We're in the spirit of worship today. That's my comfort zone. That's my comfort that relaxes me, that puts me in my respite. As I go for another surgery tomorrow morning, I'm leaning and depending on my friend who sits high and looks low, who knows everything, who can watch over me, who can watch over the doctor. 
and all that's going to transpire tomorrow. I place it all in the hands of my friend. You may call him Holy Ghost. You may call him Holy Spirit. You may call him Comforter. You may call him Teacher. You may call him Paraclete. You may call him Mediator. You may call him your Advocate. You may call him your Daily Reminder. But I call him my friend. I call him my friend. Hallelujah. Pray for me.
give God praise. Yes, God. your friend oh Lord oh, but I long I long to call call your friend oh Lord oh Lord oh Lord but I long I long to call you call you my friend today who have you known him to be to you this morning hallelujah some of you call him healer some of you call him a deliverer some of you call him a redeemer some of you call him a restorer some of you call him a way maker some of you call him a miracle worker hallelujah what do you call him on today reverence him in this place hallelujah acknowledge who he is to you hallelujah 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 god we praise you on today wake up bible way hallelujah wake up bible way hallelujah 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 bless him on today he is a good god hallelujah he is a sovereign god hallelujah he is an awesome god hallelujah he is an amazing god one thing about it when you know that 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 he is the same God that healed you he is the same God that saved you when you was in the pit of hell he came down and rescued you he is our restorer he is our rock and our shield and our buckler God we praise you all today We thank you this morning for joining us. We thank those who are streaming live. We give God honor for you. It is a pleasure to stand before you today in the house of God because it could have went another way, but God didn't see fit. And that is why we praise him. And that is why we honor him. And that is why we lift him up. That is why we exalt him. That is why we extol him. That's why we call him the King of Kings. That is why we call him the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He is our host. Hallelujah. He is our banner. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I have so much to thank God for. Hallelujah. And the very fact that I'm able to stand in his presence and stand in his house hallelujah and open up my lips as a sacrifice of praise hallelujah i dare not give the devil any room in this house i dare not stand in his presence and not glorify our god i dare not stand in his presence and not honor who he is on today hallelujah some of you are looking at me hallelujah hallelujah like he's done nothing for you 
hallelujah, but I just want to remind you, hallelujah, hallelujah, that he is still good. In spite of every circumstance, he is still good. In spite of every situation, he is still good. And he still deserves the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is waiting on you. He's waiting on you. And some of you are saying, why is she tarrying? He's waiting on you because whatever you need is in the house today. Whatever you need him to do, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah. As we prepare for a communion. Hallelujah. If you do not have your vessels, we ask that the, uh, the deacons will come forth and they will assist you with that. It is an honor to be able to stand in God's presence and be able to stand and observe Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Somebody is laying on their back and they can observe Holy Communion but want to. Hallelujah. So we take it not for granted that we are able to stand and we're able to sit in the presence of God. Hallelujah. We're able to come into the house of God with a praise on our lips. We're able to come into the house of God with thanksgiving. We're able to come into the house of God, hallelujah, giving him glory for simply being who he is. We thank you, Lord. And we don't take this moment lightly. Hallelujah. I ask that everyone would stand, please. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for another day and another opportunity. Hallelujah. We repent, God of our sins, knowingly and unknowingly. Hallelujah. As we lift our unclean hands, God, we surrender to you in this house. That is why we thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. Wash us white as snow, God. Cleanse us, oh God. Hallelujah. Cleanse our minds, our thoughts, and our hearts the intention of our heart, O oh God. Settle our spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every distraction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, O oh God, for being the lover of our soul. We thank you, O oh God, for being faithful when we've been found unfaithful, O oh God. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. that stands in the gap on our behalf, oh God. We thank you. Hallelujah. We honor you, oh God. Heal everybody in this, in this place, oh God. Every sickness, every disease, oh God. Hallelujah. Every pain, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood that covers us each and every day. We thank you for the blood, oh God. That is why we're able to stand before your presence, oh God. We thank you for the blood, and it will never lose its power. We thank you, Jesus. We stand submitted to you in your power and your grace and mercy, oh God. We stand submitted to you, oh God, asking you, oh God. To touch our hearts and our minds. As we examine ourselves today. Let us be reminded that it is only by your goodness. And your grace and your mercy that we are able to stand here today. 
and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is my cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know, I know it was the blood from me. me. One day Again, if you have a gray Kia, tag number CQT6992, please move your car. At this time, we will prepare for our video announcements. advanced directives, and more. Our guest speaker is a Veterans Administration accredited attorney, so come with your questions. Saturday, November 9th at 11 a.m. in the Robert G. Norwood Fellowship Hall. See Sister Betty Gilbert or Sister Gail Trimble or register on the BW app. November 10th, Veterans Day Observance. Service, honor, and fidelity to the Constitution of the United States. Veterans have served and protected our democracy near and far. 
Sunday, we honor those among us who have served in the armed forces. Monday, the church office will be closed. November 11th through the 14th, Food Bank. The food pantry serves hundreds of families monthly and upwards of 600 families during the holidays. We appreciate your volunteer support, whether you help to sort boxes or you provide a generous donation. We're here for our community, November 11th through the 14th. See Sister Beverly Jones or arrive by 9 a.m. to volunteer. November 16th, SALT. Staff and leadership team meeting on Saturday, November 16th at 10 a.m. via Zoom. If you are a ministry leader, serve on a committee, or are simply interested, this meeting is for you as we discuss 2025. These have been our Bible Way ministry announcements. We're excited about all the new things coming ahead, so please be sure to stay tuned. And in closing, may I remind you of our memory verse of the month. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7 says, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Enjoy the rest of the service. As we enter into this season of Thanksgiving, we're going to enter his gates with Thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. If you're happy to be here today, if you're happy to be here, say yes. If you're happy to be here, shout hallelujah. If you're happy to be here, shout glory. Let's enter into his case of thanksgiving.
come to bless his name. Come on, say it. his name for he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun unto the going down to the same the name of our God is to be praised come on for about 30 seconds let's bless the name of our God Lord we give you praise Lord we give you glory he's been just that good Somebody bless him in the house one more time. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Can we thank God for this wonderful group of singers? Come on and give God praise for them, for the musicians. Come on and thank God for them leading us in such a high time of worship. Amen. We give God praise for everybody from everywhere. Would you look up and down your row and just give a smile to those who are seated near you, those in front of you, behind you. As you look around, just share the love. Amen. And now let's acknowledge our streaming audience, those who are streaming. Make some noise. Give God praise for them. And if you're streaming, would you drop something in the chat? Put something in the comments so that we know that you are there. Come on, let's give God praise for one another one more time. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Anybody just glad to be here today? Come on and give God a I'm glad to be here praise and give God glory for he is worthy to be praised. I had a few of the saints put me on notice that there was a certain sporting contest going on downtown and they needed to be out of service by a certain time. And I told them they needed to take it up with the Lord. <laughs> I told them it'd be all right. We'd be out, by, we'd be out way before one o'clock. They said, but there's a tailgate. I said... <laughs> Somebody's like, what is the pastor talking about? Somebody said, yes, pastor, get on with it. <laughs> Can we give God praise just for being in the house of the Lord on the Lord's Day morning, on the first Sunday of a new month? Come on, give God praise that he blessed you, that he brought you, that he kept you. Early this morning, the Lord blessed you with an extra hour of sleep. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody just came late. Don't even know that God gave you. And that, come on, give God the praise. Give him the glory for he is worthy to be praised. I want to thank God for so much that goes on here at Bible Way that we may take for granted. I thank God for the prayer line. Anybody familiar with the prayer line? Seven days a week. Come on, give God praise. We're my prayer line saints. If you're on the prayer line, we thank God for you yesterday morning on the first Saturday of the month. We are here in person in the sanctuary the first Saturday. Somebody say first Saturday. At 7 o'clock a.m., but we also are joining the prayer line. We also have a Zoom stream, and we thank God for our intercessors. And speaking of our intercessors, they had a wonderful retreat. Intercessors, wave your hand wherever you are. They had a wonderful retreat a couple of weeks ago in the mountains of Tennessee. Come on, somebody give God some glory. Thank God for you, Minister Hattie, and all that went with you. And then... We thank God for yesterday, one of our largest and most active groups in our congregation. Guess who it is? The Seniors on the Go. Make some noise for the Seniors on the Go. They had a Thanksgiving luncheon on yesterday. 
and it was thoroughly enjoyable. I want to just ask all of those who were there, would you stand or wave your hand that we might acknowledge you and what you did? Amen. I see Sister Shell. Thank God for your leadership. Sister Gail, amen. Evangelist Mary, I see you. Come on and give God praise for all of those who were able to partake. They have a wonderful schedule of events coming up. Amen. And you will want to engage and become aware so that you can be a part of all that they will be doing. And then this morning, somebody say this morning. I love it when I get here and the saints are praying. Come on. Somebody thank God for a praying church. We thank God for the intercessors every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock a.m. It's open. You're welcome to come and to join them. And then Sunday school. Where are my Sunday school saints? Can we give God praise for the blessing of Sunday school? And the lesson this morning was from the life of Jonah. Somebody say Jonah. And in particular about repentance. Anybody know what repentance is? Because we're going to give you the opportunity at the end of the message today to repent if you need to repent. And if you don't know Jesus, you need to repent. If you know Jesus and you got some stuff that you haven't let go of, you need to repent. I'm thinking of a definition that Apostle Norwood gave of repentance when I grew up. He said, repentance means being sorry, but sorry enough to quit. <laughs> I'll let you think about that. I'll let you muse on that. Come on, somebody thank God for the bishop of the house. Thank God for Apostle Norwood. And then I want to, once again, on behalf of my wife, Wanda, and I give you, amen, great gratitude and thanksgiving from our hearts for the wonderful way that you joined the pastor's aid in showing your love and appreciation for us all month long for Pastor Appreciation Month. Would you give yourselves a hand, give God praise for the wonderful way that you did that? We thank God for you. And then they have been back here uh, since their nuptials, but a few weeks ago, this precious couple came to the altar for prayer before they were united in holy matrimony. They're here today. I want to acknowledge them as husband and wife. I want to ask Brother Kanye's sister, Tina Prince, to please stand. Mr. and Mrs., would you give God praise for one of our newest couples? Come on and give God praise. I love these smiles. Come on, somebody give God some praise. <laughs> he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and... And obtain the favor of the Lord. <laughs> I see you all know the word. <laughs> Amen. I, I, some of you know I teach at Beulah Heights University, and we take prayer requests at the beginning of the class. And one of the students said, Pastor, I want you to pray that uh, my husband will find me, find me and I will be found. <laughs> I said, we will pray accordingly. Amen. <laughs> Somebody give God praise for the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Then I want to just let you know that on next Sunday, somebody said next Sunday, I think the media ministry has a slide of this. I'll be the guest speaker for the anniversary, the 19th pastoral anniversary for our friend and brother, Bishop Dr. Elijah Solomon and First Lady Christine Solomon at Refuge Temple Church here in Atlanta. So if you are available, I'd love for you to join us. This will be next Sunday afternoon. Can we thank God for the great legacy of the Solomon family. Amen. If you have your scriptures this morning, I'm going to invite your attention to the book of Joshua, chapter 14. I'm going to read in your hearing just three verses. Somebody say just three verses. He's keeping you in mind for those who have another appointment immediately following the service. <laughs> but speaking of immediately following the service, I want to thank God for our trained altar counselors. So we're going to give you an opportunity for those who don't know Jesus as Savior, those of you who are unsure, those who are backslidden, those who don't have a church family. We want to make that invitation immediately following uh, the message this morning and give you an opportunity to come. But there may be those who are here who say, I just want prayer. I'm going to give you the opportunity for that as well. But I'm excited for those of you who have a Francis list. Uh, uh, one of the ministers shared with me this week that i having an opportunity to put into practice the blessed strategy. B stands for begin with prayer. L stands for listen to them. E stands for eat a meal or find a way to share with them. S, the first S in that word blessed stands for find a way to serve them. And then the second S is share your story. It doesn't have to be my story. It can be your story, what the Lord has done for you. And what I'm excited about is we are encouraging our congregation. One plants, another waters, but what? God gives the increase. 
And I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but the, the year is counting down, and we have challenged everybody in our congregation, somebody say everybody, to share the good news of the gospel with at least one person, lead one person, amen, to Christ. And so because the, the year is counting down, amen, we're praying that, amen, you are prayerful, that you are engaging, and you've got your Francis list, and you're praying, and we want to give you that opportunity to partner with us as we grow in Christ, amen? When you have found... Joshua chapter 14, would you stand? I'm going to read in your hearing verses 10, 11, and 12. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. When you have Joshua chapter 14, say, I got it, Pastor. Say, hold up, Pastor, if you're still looking. Hold up, I'm holding. And if there's anybody around you without their Bible, their tablet, their phone, put a smile on your face and then invite them to share with you as we Focus now on the word of the Lord, Joshua chapter 14, verses 10, 11, and 12. And these words are recorded, and now, somebody say now. Behold, the Lord has kept me alive. This is the testimony of Caleb, by the way. Somebody say Caleb. Caleb said, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 45 years Ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, somebody say now. In other words, something is coming to pass here. He says, here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war both for going out and for coming in. Verse 12, Caleb says, Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spake in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out. What? As the Lord said. This is the word of the Lord. It is already blessed. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the songs of Zion. We thank you, Lord, for the service of Holy Communion. We thank you for the engagement, the fellowship. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost. But, Lord, your word declares that we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We need to hear from heaven today, Lord. You know where we are. You know what we need. We ask you to speak to us now. In Jesus' name we pray. And every heart said, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to talk from the subject, I'm still in the game. I'm still in the game. And you may have already put two and two together. I'm talking about the testimony of Caleb. Somebody say Caleb. He's 85 years young, and he's still in the game. Really, I'm, I'm starting a, a year-end series about loving God, loving people, making disciples. If you've been around Bible Way any length of time, you know this is our vision, mission, and purpose. Would you say it with me? Love God, love people, make disciples. Now, you know, sometimes we're saying that on faith because, you know, if we're honest, everybody may not like people that much. <laughs> And we're talking about loving God, loving people, and making disciples. And some of us have to decide if we, if we want to be people-friendly today. <laughs> and then some of us have to decide whether we want to be disciples ourselves and then whether we want to be a part of discipling others. That's really been the theme of the discipleship group that we began back in the month of January. We meet twice a month. We meet in person on the first Saturday of the month. We meet virtually for a check-in on the third Saturday. It's an opportunity for us to be intentional about following Jesus Christ. You know, if you read the Bible, the word Christian is mentioned just three times, but the word disciple or follower of Christ is mentioned hundreds of times. Jesus was serious about what it meant to follow. And so as we look at this, this is the approach we want to take. We want to look at what it means to love God, love people, and make disciples across the generations of our church. Somebody say the generations. Some would say that we are intergenerational. Some would say that we are multi-generational. But when I think about it, there are at least seven generations represented in our congregation. Somebody say seven. 
So first, there's the greatest generation. The, those are those people who were born 1901 to 1927. Tom Brokaw wrote a book called The Greatest Generation, and so that's where that title comes from, The Greatest Generation. Jimmy Carter is in that generation. Malcolm X, Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, Jackie Robinson. Jimmy is still with us. We actually have a member of our congregation, the eldest member of our congregation, Mother Ruth Mitchell, next year will turn 100 years young. Somebody give God praise for her. She's still well. She's still active in her right mind. <laughs> and that bread and pastries that you get often on Sunday, that comes from Mother Ruth Mitchell. Somebody give God praise for the member of the greatest generation. <laughs> then there is the silent generation, those born between 1928 and 19. 45. They grew up in the aftermath of the Depression. They were influenced by World War II. This is people like Martin Luther King Jr., Muhammad Ali, James Earl Jones, who we lost, and Jimi Hendrix, Aretha Franklin, and our own apostle. We've got a number of people in the silent generation. Make some noise if you're here. Give God praise for them. Then we got the baby boomers, those born between 1946 and 1964. That's a whole lot of us. I see you, Robert. I'm on the tail end of the boomer generation. That's post-war optimism born in the prosperous period following World War II. That's people like Barack Obama, Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jordan, Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Stevie. That's the, that's the baby boomers. But then there's Generation X. Some of you thought I was going to the millennials. Somebody said Gen X. That's, that's people who were born 1965 to 1980, shifting societal values. Generation X grew up during a time of changing family structures and societal norms. Notable people from the gen George Floyd, Tupac Shakur, Kobe Bryant, Janet Jackson, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Snoop Doggy Dogg, Jay-Z, Shaquille Kanye. Some of you know these names. But then there are those millennials, mm. born 1981 to 1996. I'm, blessed with three millennial children, my God. The youngest child is almost 30 years old, and I don't look 30 myself, my God. They came of age in the digital era. Some of you know about them. We're talking about people like Beyonce and Serena Williams and Rihanna, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kendrick Lamar, Nicki Minaj. But then we have to move on beyond that generation to Gen Z, Generation Z, those born 1997 to 2012. They are digital natives. What do I mean by that? Generation Z is the first cohort to grow up with smartphones and constant connectivity. They don't know what a rotary phone is. If you showed it to them, they wouldn't know what to do with that. Some, but then there is actually the seventh and final generation, Generation Alpha. Somebody say Alpha. Those born between 2013 and the present, they're growing up with AI, artificial intelligence, where there's some debate on when alpha kicks in, the actual date. Generation alpha is coming of age in a world that's dominated by artificial intelligence. You won't be able to buy a smartphone, a smart device that has not been touched by AI. We're talking about Jay-Z's children. We're talking about Beyonce's children, Blue Ivy Carter, and so many other. We're all growing older. This is the point. And we all hear the gospel, we all share the gospel, we all live life in different ways, different things appeal to us. And so as we go through this series of messages, I want to look at each generation. So today, I want to start with the testimony of Caleb, who was 85, but I want to say for those in our congregation who are 70 years plus, you are a golden age, my God. You are the backbone of the kingdom. You are the backbone of the body. You are the backbone of this ministry. Somebody give God praise for this generation. And you need to listen out closely because if you keep living, it's in your future. Somebody got it. Somebody didn't. A 90-year-old was asked what he felt like when he woke up in the morning. He said, surprised. We're all growing older no matter how old you are, what your age is. Now, if the sun keeps rising and setting, and if the clock keeps advancing, one day you're going to wake up old. I, I'm sorry to tell you. And you'll know you're getting old when your mind makes contracts and commitments that your body just can't keep. You tell your body to do something, and it just sits there. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. You know you're getting old when you know all of the answers, but nobody asks the questions. You know you're getting old when all the numbers in your phone directory have MD behind them. You know you're getting old when you walk with your head held high because you're trying to get used to your bifocals. 
You know you're getting old when you turn out the lights for economic reasons rather than romantic ones. You know that you're getting old when you sit in a rocking chair and you can't get it to move. You know you're getting old when your knees buckle but your belt won't. Have mercy, Jesus. You know you're getting old when you go upstairs to get something, but halfway up you realize you don't know what you were going upstairs for. You decide to go back downstairs to try to remember what you needed, but while you're up there, you start looking around for something to need to go downstairs. You know you're getting old when you sit on the stairs only to discover after three minutes you have completely forgotten whether you were originally going upstairs or downstairs. Just look straight. They won't know I'm talking about you. The truth is, somebody say the truth. We are all growing older. It's an unavoidable process that began at birth. I, re I remember when my metabolism started to slow down. I got upset. I used to eat whatever I wanted to eat, and in the 30s, something happened. It was a change. I didn't understand it. I began to see what I ate in my body. Somebody's not there. Somebody's been there. You understand. There was a marvelous book by Susan Jacoby entitled Never Say Die subtitled The Myth and Marketing of the New Old Age. I, I recommend the book. In her book, she gives a written critique of our culture and the efforts to deny aging and dying and the extent to which we go to hide the elderly. She used some terms in the book that have stuck in my mind. For example, over and over again, she uses the term elderly. But she also uses another word. She uses the word welderly, the elderly who are well. And she uses the term elderly for those who are not well. But three other words jumped off the page. In her book, she talks about the young old, those who are 65 to 75 years old. She talks about the old, those who are 75 to 85 years old. And she talks about the old, old, those who are 85 and older. And when it comes to growing older, we need not deny it, is her point, nor fear it, because as we embrace it, we can not only endure it, but we can also employ it, and we can enjoy it. You're still here for a reason. God is not done with you. And this is the testimony of our text. I want you to keep your Bibles open. In the book of Joshua, somebody say Joshua. In the text, the central human character is Caleb. He is undividedly and undoubtedly one of the most interesting characters in Scripture. I don't know if you know his story, but by the time of our text in Joshua chapter 14, Caleb is 85 years young or old, however you want to say it. But he is still believing. He is still achieving. He's still aspiring. He's still advancing. If he were here in church, he'd still be shouting. He'd still be dancing. He'd still be lifting his hand. He'd still be giving God the glory because he knew that God was not through with him yet. If you believe it and you understand it, give God a praise. <laughs> Caleb is a reminder that you're never too old to be what you might have been. You're never too old to start over again. What do you mean start over at 85? I mean that your story is not over. At 100, noted artist and painter, Grandma Moses was still painting at 100 years old. Tion completed his masterpiece, The Battle at Lento, at age 95. At age 90, Pablo Picasso was still producing drawings and engravings. At 89, Albert Schweitzer built and led a hospital on the continent of Africa in the nation known today as Gabon. Benjamin Franklin was credited with the invention of bifocus when he was 78. Sophocles wrote Oedipus Rex at 75. Ray Charles, James Brown, Smokey Robinson, Diana Ross, Patti LaBelle, and many others are or were still touring, singing, and entertaining well into their 80s. And Caleb, somebody say Caleb, 85 years young, is still aspiring, achieving, and advancing along with his younger counterpart, Joshua. Joshua, Caleb, they are a pair. Caleb and Joshua, they were among the 12 spies sent by Moses to survey the promised land of Canaan. And along with Joshua, they were the only two of the 12 spies sent who brought back a favorable report. Somebody say a favorable report. Some of you heard the song, whose report will you believe? What's the response? We shall believe the report of the Lord. You ought to get that thing in your spirit. They believe what God said, so they brought back a minority report, but it was a favorable report that God's people could do what God had called them to do. They believed and they knew that God would do it. Twelve spies were sent forth. They saw, they surveyed, they returned, they reported 
but only two of them saw this project as doable and the goal as achievable. Unfortunately, can I tell you something? These are always the odds when you're trying to move ahead. You're trying to be something, do something, go somewhere, be somebody. Many people will not understand. Some of us don't even share the good news that we have. We know that the haters are going to hate. We know that the naysayers are going to nay. We don't even want to tell people because we know how they're going to come back at us. The point is there will always be opposition because if everybody likes where you're going, you're probably not going anywhere worth going. If everybody likes what you're saying, you're probably not saying anything really worth hearing. If everybody likes what you're doing, you're probably not doing anything worth doing. Because if you're doing what you're doing is imaginative, if it's creative, if it's visionary, if it's out of the box, if it's different, if it's novel, if it's unique, if it's something that's never been done, never been said, never been attempted or tried before, it will pluck somebody's nerves. They will throw rocks at it. Oh, you can try it if you want, so and so. No, no, no. This is your vision that God has given you. And 10 of the 12 spies reported negatively it could not be done, while the minority report of two of the 12, Caleb and Joshua, reported positively it can be done. We can do it, and we ought to do it now. 10 of them saw only giants. Two of them saw only God. I'm preaching. 10 of them gazed at fear, but two of them gazed in faith. Ten of them were grasshoppers in their own sight, but two of them were soldiers armed and ready for battle. The meeting was called, the motion was made, seconded, and the vote was cast. The majority said, we cannot do it, and we will not go. They had exited Egypt, but they were afraid to enter Canaan because they believed theoretically, but they would not practice actually. They knew what the word said. They knew what God had spoken, but they sat down. They stood on the promises, but they sat in the premises. Moses and Aaron pleaded with them to trust God, and yet they griped, they grumbled, they complained that God gave them. They, they did it so much that God gave them exactly what they wanted. God sentenced them to 40 years in the wilderness of walking around in circles. It should have taken about 11 days to get to Canaan. <laughs> but they are walking around for 40 years. I'm already preaching. Some of us in the wilderness of life. <laughs> You think you're living, you think you have achieved, but you have not reached all that God has for you. You, not, you have not accessed all that God intends for you. Only two of them, Caleb and Joshua, would ever see the land of promise because, hear me well, if you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. But if you agree with God about your possibility, you get to possess it. Preach, Pastor. If you agree with God about your possibility, you get to possess all that God. You need to believe what God says about you and not what people say about you. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror. Great is he who is within me than he that is in the world. I can achieve if God be for me, who can be against me? You know, this story is interesting. In Joshua chapter 14, a generation has passed and... The reins of leadership has passed to a new leader. God's people have crossed the Jordan River, and now, somebody said now, a new generation had finally done what Caleb and Joshua told them they could have done 40 years ago. And in chapter 14, I hope you got your Bibles open, Joshua began to divide up the land exactly as God has instructed him. And while Joshua was dividing the land at 85 years old, this man of faith, Caleb, showed up. And this is what he said. This is, he said, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses. I am today 85 years old and I'm still as strong today as the day that Moses sent the spies and holding on to the promise of God. Can you imagine holding on for 45 years? To paraphrase, this is the message, don't miss it. Caleb said, I'm still in the game. I'm 45 years older, but I'm still in the game. What are you trying to say, Pastor? To the senior saints, you're still in the game. <laughs> you're not the church of yesterday. You're very much the church of the day. We stand on your shoulders. We look for the lessons. We need to be encouraged. We need to be exhorted. Sometimes we need to be chided and disciplined. Caleb was still in the game. Look at two or three people and tell them, you're still in the game. That's how you know that, because you're still here. Somebody give God, I'm still here. 
But, but this raises the question. I want to raise a question and answer, and then I'll be done. This is not a long message. You remember, I got some requests about the end of service. I'm going to give you three lessons from Caleb. Number one, if you want to stay in the game, you've got to remember God's faithfulness. You have got to remember. Somebody ought to write that down. You need to remember God's faithfulness. You know what our problem is? Many of us, we forget what we need to remember, and we remember what we need to forget. Preach, Pastor. We remember what we ought to forget, <laughs> but we forget what we ought to remember. You know, when I had a paper Bible and I was using my paper Bible, I would write all in it. You know, some people say, you know, the Bible is sacred. You can't write in it. I say, I write in it because I want to remember what God does. I want to write down the answers to prayer. I want a record. I want to go back and review and give God praise that if he did it back then, he can do it again. If you want to stay in the game, you got to remember that God is faithful. God has a track record with you. When you look back over your life and you think things over, somebody ought to jump up right now and say, God, I thank you. I, didn't even, I shouldn't even be here, but God, your mercy endures your faithfulness to every generation. Somebody give God praise. Sometimes I tell people, you don't have a thanking problem. You got a thinking problem. You need to learn how to think about what the Lord has done for you. You know what the preacher says. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done. For Caleb, 45 years have been filled until the archives of time since that spying episode in the life of God's people. Moses had passed. Joshua was now the leader. Caleb was 85 years old. He's a soldier. He's a spokesperson for the descendants of Judah. And they approached Joshua at a place called Gilgal. This is important. Somebody say Gilgal. They're on the eastern border of Jericho. It wasn't just the operational center for God's people. It's not just a place and a space. But after crossing the Jordan River, it was a reminder of God's intervention because God did the same thing, parting the waters of the Jordan River that God had done, parting the waters of the Red Sea. Don't miss your shout. God has parted some Jordan Rivers in your life. God has parted some Red Seas in my life. How do you know, Pastor? Because you're still here. Somebody give him praise. I'm still here. I'm still here. A.W. Tozer wrote something worth hearing and remembering. A.W. Tozer, one of my favorite writers, he said, anything that God has ever done anywhere, God can do right here. And anything God has ever done for anybody, God can do it for you. Don't miss your shout. God, I thank you. If you did it for Caleb, you can do it for me. If you believe it, somebody give God a praise. He is no respecter of persons. He's the same yesterday and tomorrow. And somebody ought to give him praise if you believe it. Ty Tribbett put it like this. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God, right? Same God back then. So to mark and to celebrate crossing the Jordan River, they erected 12 memorial stones at Gilgal, setting this place aside so they would remember. What are you trying to say? You know, one of the reasons we don't remember what we, are, we need to remember is we don't put memorials in place. That's why I, say I used to write in my Bible. Now I write in journals. Now I use the memo function in my phone. But you need to write down some things because we forget what we need to remember, and we remember what we need to forget. They wrote these things down and by erecting 12 memorial stones so they would never forget and what Gilgal was to Joshua is what Bethel was to Abraham. It's what Mount Carmel was to Elijah. It's what Shiloh was to Sam. These were places of watershed moments, powerful experience with God that took place. And they didn't want to forget what God had done. They didn't want to forget how God showed up and spoke to them. And likewise, somebody say likewise. We need the same in our lives. We need places and spaces and reminders and memorials like that in our lives so we will never forget what the Lord has done. We sing Jesus, I'll never forget, but we have forgotten. Because when we remember the faithfulness of God, it encourages us to hold on right here where we are. That's why we need senior saints. They need to sit us down and just, let me talk to you, son. Let me talk to you, daughter. Let me tell you a few things. Let me let you tell me what's going on in your life. And then let me tell you how God has worked in my life. The memories of what God has already done for you will give you strength when you need it the most. Caleb is standing before Joshua 45 years later, and he testifies, you know what the Lord promised me because I walked in faith. And Caleb's experience of God since that time had reinforced his trust in God. He knew that he could trust God because if God said it, God would do it. If God spoke it, God would bring it to pass. Caleb was still in the game. 
because he remembered God's faithfulness. This is the second point. I'm almost done. The second way he stayed in the game is you got to be willing to claim God's promise. You got to be willing to claim. Somebody ought to write that down. And, you know, the tragedy is some of us don't even know the promises of God. <laughs> you know, every promise in the book is ours, but some of us know the promises, but we're sitting on the premises. First of all, you got to know the promise, and then you got to claim the promise, and then some of the promises are conditional. I hear people all the time quoting the word of God, just spitting it out like it's for anybody. No, no, no. Some of these promises are conditioned. When I think about Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together. No, 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 not for just anybody and everybody, but for those who what? Love the Lord and are called. I recognize you got a purpose and a plan for my life, and I don't know how you're going to work this out, but you, your word says you're going to work it for my good. And so, Lord, I trust you because your word declares it. In verse 12, Caleb declared, give me this mountain. That was what was promised to him by Moses. And so he's showing up with receipts saying, I'm, I'm ready to take possession. Give me this mountain the Lord promised me on the day because you've heard that the Anakim were there, that there are large and fortified cities, but the Lord will be with me and I'll drive them out as the Lord. He said, I'm, I'm still feisty. I'm ready to fight. I'm locked and loaded. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that in the flesh. The Bible does say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are Mighty through God for the, no, 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 I'm saying that we need to learn how to war spiritually. And some of us, we need a whole series of sermons and teachings on that, my God. But he simply said, I'm ready to do what God has promised. Caleb's request is undaunted because as a refiner, this is how I want to describe him. He's a refiner. Mm -hmm. That lets me know where we're going in 2025 as a theme. We're going from, from alignment to assignment to refinement. And, and I want to look at Caleb as an example of a refiner. He has requested to move forward with the promise of God on his life, and he declared, give me this mountain. And this is a radical redefining of how we typically see and age, and those who are aging, it's at the center of our national discussion now, and it was on the table even back then. We talk a lot about those who are elderly, but no matter what your age, if you still have a pulse, God still has a purpose. That's why you're still here. You're not dead yet. You're still breathing. You're still surviving. You're still thinking. You're still dreaming. You're still hoping and still trusting God Almighty. If he brought you this far, he didn't bring you to leave you. Caleb reminded Joshua that what he had heard back then about the giants and the cities was still true, but God's promise was just as true. You, I, I love this. I love this because he doesn't speak a positive confession like all of a sudden in 45 years, the impediments, the obstacles are gone. The opportunity is still there. That's, that's God's promise to him. That's God's promise to us. It's still valid. There's no expiration date on it. That Caleb was as positive now as he was 45 years earlier. The giants were still large. The cities were still fortified. But for 45 years, nothing had dampened his spirit, eliminated his enthusiasm, curtailed his courage, or downsized his faith, or his positive outlook on life. He still believed. Somebody ought to give God some praise. My question to you is, do you still believe? Do you still believe that God can make a way out of nowhere? Do you still believe that God knows what you're facing, what you're up to? Do you still believe that your extremity becomes God's opportunity? Do you still believe God's not done with you yet? Do you still believe God can give you a message out of a mess? Do you still believe because if you believe, then you will do exactly what Caleb did. It was because of Caleb's relationship with the Lord. He was fully confident in the Lord's presence, the Lord's purpose, and the Lord's power. He never tired of the Lord's wonder, the Lord's work, and the Lord's word. He never lost sight of the Lord's glory, God's greatness, and God's goodness. For getting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can you help me this morning? Are you still in the game? Caleb stayed in the game because he remembered God's faithfulness, because he claimed God's promise. This is the third and final point. Caleb stayed in the game because he received God's blessings. He received God's blessings. Somebody ought to write it down. Have I really accepted, appropriated, acknowledged, or even understood that the Lord is blessing me right now, even before the prayer is answered? Have I understood that I don't have to wait till the game is over? I don't have to wait till I get through the trial to give God praise? It's in the text, verse 13, then Joshua blessed Caleb and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. Don't miss your shout. Don't, 
In other words, God granted his request. God gave it to him. And there are many forms of blessing in Scripture. We bless God in worship. We express praise to God. We've done it today. God blesses us spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and materially. All of that we have is a blessing from the Lord. And here Joshua blessed Caleb with his long-awaited land and inheritance. Hebron was the place he was given that demonstrated God's blessings for Caleb's faithfulness. Don't miss your shout. Don't miss your praise. Because there's a message even in the land that he's given. The message is that you've got to stick it out sometimes because you can miss what God has for you because you give up too soon. You move too soon. You move too slow. Because watch this. Hebron was the very place that the ten spies rejected God's promise and what God's people doubted became Caleb's by faith. Don't miss your shout. The name was changed from Kadesh Barnea to Hebron because he stayed in the game. Come on, encourage somebody about you. Tell them, stay in the game. Stay in the game. You got to stay in the game. Stay in the game. Caleb stayed in the game, but not only Caleb. I'm so glad Jesus stayed in the game. He stayed in the game giving sight to the blind, giving strength to the weak, giving justice to the oppressed, giving hearing to the deaf, giving bread to the hungry, giving healing to the sick. Jesus stayed in the game by setting captives free. He gave beauty for ashes. He declared the acceptable year of the Lord. He stayed in the game by being obedient unto death, even death on the cross. He stayed in the game by taking on the sins of the world, being wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He stayed in the game by taking on the devil where the devil had home court advantage. He stepped down into hell and slapped the crown off Satan's head and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And on the third day, God raised him up with all power in his hand. He stayed in the game, ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God. He stayed in the game, wiping our sins away. And I've got good news today. He's in the game right now making intercession for us in the presence of almighty God he's in the game how do you know pastor he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known you ought to give God some praise you ought to give God some glory because at the name of Jesus Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. I don't know about you, but I've got some dreams that are yet unfulfilled. I've got some places that I believe yet to go. And it doesn't matter what the mileage is. I know that if I'm still here, if I've got a pulse, God still has a purpose. If I've got anybody here today who say, Pastor, pray, that word was for me. If you know you're still in the game, somebody jump on your feet. I'm still in the game. I'm, I might have been a little discouraged, but I'm still in the game. I don't have the coins that I want. I don't have the boo I want, but I'm still in the game. I don't have everything I thought I'd have by now, but I'm still in the game. I'm still here. There's still a possibility. Somebody ought to be on your feet giving God praise, giving God glory. God, I thank you for what you've already done. I thank you for where you brought me. And I thank you that you're not done with me yet, my God. As the musician begins to play, praise team, come. Let's sing that song, I Don't Feel No Ways Tired. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't know about you, but I got a second win right now. <laughs> I'm ready to walk on. I'm ready to run on and see what the end is going to be. Oh, I can't do what I used to do, but I can do something. Y'all not hearing me in the house. I may not be able to do everything I want to do, but I can do something. Apostle Norwood tells the story, and I never will forget it. He talked about a military parade. The soldiers were marching down the street in their uniforms in pristine formation. And this woman with an iron poker from a fireplace was marching beside him. And they said, oh, woman, what you think you're doing? She said, I may not be able to fight, but I can let them know whose side I'm on. <laughs> Somebody today 
needs to join the right side. If you want to be in the game, this is draft time. <laughs> if you're here today right now, whether you're in person or you're streaming, I want to invite you to come. We've got trained counselors for those who would say, Pastor, I want to meet Jesus. I want to know this Savior you've been talking about, the one who stayed in the game for me, who gave his life. The word of the Lord says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. If you're here today and you were invited, maybe that's why you were invited. Maybe you've been around church, but being around church doesn't make you saved any more than being in the oven makes you a biscuit. My God. No, no, no. God has no grandchildren. You got to take care of this for yourself. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus as Savior. If you're unsure, if you're backslidden, if you don't have a church home, a church family, I want you to come now. If you're streaming, I want you to let us know in the chat. I'm unsaved. I want to meet Jesus. I'm unsure. I want to know. I'm backslidden. I want to come back. I want to repent. I'm without a church family, a church home. You can connect even virtually. If you're here as we sing this song, would you come? I don't. Yeah. I'm too far. Musicians, play softly before we sing the last verse. I want to invite two groups of people to come quickly. Those of you who've got the Francis list, you're praying for people who fall into one of those categories. They're not saved. They're not sure. They're backslidden. They're not connected to a church family. They don't believe in organized religion. You tell them, at my church, we disorganized. You can come. If you got that list and you got people you're praying for, I want you to come quickly and stand with me. I'm already down here. I've got my list. But we are praying in agreement for a harvest of souls. Maybe they won't even come to this church. That's not the point. We want them to come to Jesus. <laughs> and as you pray for them, others are praying for them. And the harvest may come for those that you're targeting, but it may come from others. Just because you were conscientious, you were intentional about sowing the word, planting the seed, watering the seed, and believing God to give the increase. I want to thank God for those of you who come. Now, this is the second group of people I want to come. You may already be here for the second appeal, but for those who say, Pastor, that word was for me. I needed to know that I'm still in the game, that my dream is not over. God is not through with me. Things may have shifted. But if God said it, God will do it. If God spoke it, God, if you believe and you received a word of encouragement today, I want you to come quickly. I want to pray that we can seal this word today. That not only will it be a good word that you heard, but you will put one foot in front of the other. For we walk by faith. You're going to do something as a result of this word. You're going to put it into practice. However it is that you can, that the Lord leads you. You're going to make a change. You're going to take a step. You're going to take action. I want you to come quickly. I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe God with you right now. God, I thank you for those who are walking. I thank you for those who've come. I thank you for those who are standing with me. I thank you that I'm here. They're here, Lord, because we believe you to do something that, Lord, only you can do. We thank you for serving a God who's still able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think, Lord. I'm praying for family members. I'm praying for relatives. I'm praying for acquaintances. I'm praying for co-workers and neighbors, even some of my enemies, my haters, even folk I barely know, strangers whose path I cross. I'm praying and believing you, Lord, to help me to reach my goal of connecting and winning at least one soul for Christ this year, Lord. I thank you for those who believe, who trust, who have faith. Lord, I join now my prayer with their prayer. I join my faith with their faith. We trust you, Lord. We honor your word. You said the promise was unto us. It's unto our children. It's unto those that are afar off and to as many as the Lord our God. Lord, save our children. Save our grandchildren. Save our great-grandchildren. Save our immediate family. 
save our extended family. Lord, you can reach them. We thank you by faith that it is so. We're not going to wait until they come into the household of faith. We give you praise right now. We give you glory. And now, Lord, for those, Lord, who had given up on their dream, those who thought that they're just existing, those who thought that their prime is past, those who thought, Lord, that, Lord, the time is past, it can't happen. Now, Lord, I thank you that even when things shift, even when times pass, Lord, I thank you that you've not given up on us. We thank you for the testimony of Caleb. And it is no secret what you can do if you did it for him. You can do it for us. We thank you by faith right now that it is so in the name of Jesus. So it is, we pray. And every heart said amen. amen. And amen. And amen. Give God praise all over this house. Come on, put your arms around somebody and give God praise as you return to your seats. If you're here for any of those appeals, the trained altar counselors are here. The road would be. I don't believe. I don't, I don't believe, believe he brought me this far to leave me. Say it one more time. I don't believe. I yes. I don't believe. Don't believe he brought me this far. I don't far. believe. I don't believe oh. he brought me this far. I don't far. believe. I don't believe oh. he brought me this I far. Believe. One more time, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Somebody give God praise in this place. Somebody give God praise in this house. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I look out, I see those with special needs and prayer requests and concerns. And we are praying with you. We are praying for you. We believe that we still serve a God who works miracles. Amen. If you believe it, come on and give God praise by faith that it is so. We're going to prepare now to worship the Lord with our gifts. Praise the Lord. It's offering time. Come on and give God praise as we prepare now to worship the Lord with our gifts, returning the Lord's tithe, for it is holy unto the Lord, giving our offerings over and above the tithe, sowing our seeds. Don't these ushers look good? You ought to give God some praise for open hand. Our greeters and ushers. Come on, you can do better than that. Thank God for them. If you're in need of a physical envelope, if you'll lift your hands, they will serve you all of the ways that you can give. I'm going to ask the three of media ministry to put them on the screen. We're grateful for those of you who joined me in giving virtually. You can give any time of the day or night, seven days a week, 24-7. How many of you would say, God has been good to me? God has been faithful to me. God has been better to me than I've been to myself. You ought to give God praise. You know what I thank God for the most? Those things that money cannot buy. Pastor Jason Christopher Brown told us he's having surgery in the morning. God is already there. Amen. Sister Diane Cunningham needs God to move. God is already there. We're lifting up Sister Gail Mark. Come on, somebody thank God for every name, every condition, every... Si Don't, you ought to give God praise like the work is done. As we prepare now to worship the Lord... I am reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, where he says, we ought not to give grudgingly or of necessity. <laughs> he says, the Lord loves what kind of giver? The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So sometimes you need to have a conversation with yourself and say, self, <laughs> God has been good to you. God gave you 100%. <laughs> and God says, I want you to honor me with 10%. And as a result, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing you won't have room enough to receive. And what I like about it is what I just said is not just a blessing in terms of money, but it's a blessing in things that money can't even buy. Somebody ought to thank God if you've got those blessings. You can't put a price on God. I thank you. We praise you for your presence in this worship experience. We thank you for the testimonies throughout the room, Lord. We thank you for those who are streaming, who are witnesses to the fact, God, you will supply not some of our need, but all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I thank you for those who, through their witness and their action, are saying, God, you are my source. 
everything and everybody else is a resource. You are the source. And so, Lord, we honor you now as we prepare to return your tithe, give our offerings, sow our seeds. I ask now, Lord, that you will continue to bless the gift and the giver, O oh God. We pray that you'd honor your promise, Lord, that every need would be supplied. We give you glory in advance. We give you praise right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, would you stand now and come under the direction of the ushers as we worship the Lord with our gifts in Jesus' name. for our bishop on today. Bishop, we thank you for that mighty word that you gave us. We are still in the game. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you for simply being God. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that came forth on today. God, I ask that you will bless each and every home, bless each and every individual, meet each and every need, not just for the individuals, but this house, oh God. We thank you Lord God, for using us to build your kingdom, oh God. Let us be a light in a place of darkness, Lord God. Let us share your word. Let us be an example. Let us be a walking epistle of who you are in Jesus' name. God, we thank you and we honor you for this new week, oh God. We thank you for this new month, oh God. We are thankful, we are grateful, and we decree and declare blessings upon your people. We decree and declare, Lord God Jesus, that you will release strength unto your people, oh God. Joy, Lord God, unspeakable joy and full of glory in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Bless your people, oh God. Favor them, Lord God, that wherever their feet may tread, oh God, that you are with them, you are keeping them, you are guiding them, oh God, and that you will release your favor upon them like never before, oh God. Keep us covered under your blood, and God, we will forever give you the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 